This is Tomo News for Tuesday, February 7th. Stray amputee cat fitted with prosthetic paws. A stray cat in Sofia, Bulgaria is getting a second chance at life in more ways than one. A groundbreaking surgery has suddenly changed his fate as he's recently been fitted with prosthetics. Pooh the cat lost his hind legs in an accident last year as a kitten. It's believed he was run over by a car or a train. His difficult situation made him a good candidate for a prosthetic surgery method called ITAP, where the titanium implant pegs against the bone directly. The protruding titanium stems provide a secure attachment point for the cat's paws to snap in, which are made of Bulgarian polymer and rubber. For the procedure to be a complete success, Pooh's skin will eventually grow over the bone and stem tightly enough to prevent infections. Now 10 months old, Pooh the cat is running around fine on his new hind legs and has even been seen cleaning them. Another young amputee cat, Steven, has now also undergone the same procedure. These are Bulgaria's first successful feline prosthetic surgeries and the first in all of Europe outside England. In 2009, a cat named Oscar was fitted with prosthetic hind legs in a similar procedure, which cost roughly $62,000. Pooh's surgery cost roughly $1,600 and was paid for by donations from the animal shelter that cares for him. Now that he's got his legs back, all he needs is a new home. Robocat, anyone? Gun nuts play dangerous game with cops. Two gun advocates were arrested on Sunday when they walked into a police station in Michigan, armed to the teeth with loaded weapons, including an AP-14 rifle. Earlier that day, cops pulled the men over after receiving a report about two suspicious dudes wearing tactical vests and masks. This video, filmed by one of the men and streamed live on Facebook, shows a police sergeant politely questioning the suspects. Not seeing any weapons inside the vehicle, the officer then lets the men go free, but not before receiving an earful of profanity-laden abuse. I absolutely do. You are not searching anything. Let me go on my way. Let me be free to go, because we've done, we've broken no laws. You know this. This is a, an illegal detention at this point. You, you better get your shit straight, because we're done. Oh, I will file a complaint. Yeah, I'm going to go, like right as soon as we leave here. You, you understand? Am I free to go or not? Good. Go well, fuck yourself. About an hour later, the two men arrived at Dearborn Police Station, saying the prior traffic stop was illegal and they wanted to file a complaint. Once again, the men filmed the encounter and streamed it live on Facebook. The footage shows a 24-year-old suspect armed with a rifle and wearing a ski mask and tactical vest as his 40-year-old buddy carries a tripod and camera. We felt uh, a little afraid for our lives when we were pulled over, so we figured we'd better protect ourselves. Inside the station, a standoff with officers ensued as the 24-year-old suspect initially refused to drop his weapons and get down on the ground. When the men were eventually arrested, police seized a loaded AP-14 rifle and Glock handgun with a bucket load of ammo, along with an AR-15 and an AK-47 style rifle. The saying goes, if you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And in the current climate, it's hard to imagine a stupider game than turning up at a police station looking like you're about to start World War III. On Monday, both the police and a local open carry advocacy group condemned the men's actions. They were charged with a string of minor offenses, including breaching the peace and failure to cooperate with police. But it seems obvious to us that this situation could have turned out far, far worse. Luckily for the both of them, it didn't. Dripping is the new vaping. A Yale study has found that one in four teens have tried an alternative vaping technique, which health experts warn is potentially dangerous. E-cigarettes are typically equipped with a refillable cartridge, which feeds liquid to a heating coil to create inhalable vapor. 
With dripping, the cartridge is discarded, and drops of e-liquid are applied directly onto the heating coils or atomizer. The technique reportedly produces a stronger hit and thicker smoke. Users can more conveniently switch flavors and even customize or rebuild their coils. Researchers have found that higher coil temperatures associated with dripping emit more harmful chemicals. E-liquid spillage also poses a concern since it often contains nicotine that is more easily absorbed through the skin. Due to the many health concerns regarding vaping, the FDA has decided to regulate e-cigarettes the same way it does conventional tobacco products, though the new rules have yet to be released. Armed customer shoots and kills diaper thief at Walmart. Talk about one tough customer. A band of suspected thieves trying to make their getaway after a diaper heist at a Florida Walmart were thwarted by an armed shopper who was packing heat. The morning of February 4th, witnesses say they saw three individuals pushing shopping carts loaded with diapers and other baby items to their car in the parking lot. A Walmart employee came running out screaming, Don't get in the car! Suddenly, a 50-year-old customer then pulled out a gun and fired at the bandits. Wounded but not done in yet, the shoplifters hopped in the vehicle and sped off, crashing into two other cars. They inevitably left the vehicle and continued to flee on foot. The car was a stolen vehicle that had been jacked on January 13th. One of the suspects, 19-year-old Arthur Adams, was later found at a nearby gas station. Workers said he walked in and fell to the floor. Adams later died of multiple bullet wounds to the stomach and leg after being rushed to hospital. The armed customer involved in the incident is cooperating fully with the investigation. He claims he fired the gun because he felt threatened. Police have not disclosed whether he has a license to carry. The state attorney's office will decide if he'll face any charges. The female accomplice was tracked down by police after she'd gone to the hospital for a gunshot wound to the leg. Authorities are still on the lookout for the other man involved in the theft. Geez, how hard up must they have been to steal diapers? Tom Brady says his Super Bowl jersey was stolen, but it wasn't. Tom Brady said his Super Bowl game-winning jersey was stolen from the Patriots' locker room after New England won Super Bowl 51, following an epic comeback against the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday. Brady appeared agitated as he looked around for his jersey in the locker room after the game. The Super Bowl MVP searched several bags and told players that his number 12 jersey was gone. When owner Robert Kraft came into the locker room, Brady told him that someone had lifted his jersey. But not to worry, Tom, your jersey is safe. It turns out that the Patriots equipment manager locked up Brady's jersey to keep it safe. Guess he won't have to hop on eBay to look for it. Sex romps get transgender killer moved out of women's prison. A transitioning transsexual murderer has been removed from a woman's prison in Scotland after she was accused of boning a bunch of female prisoners. Paris Green, born Peter Lang, has been locked up in the women's wing of Edinburgh Prison. Green has now been sent back over to the male block because she'd reportedly been sleeping with female cons. Green has yet to have her sex change operation. One source said the women want sex and Paris is the only one who can give it to them. She was apparently warned several times about her behavior, but refused to listen, so prison officials decided to put her back in with the dudes. Guess the female prisoners will just have to take care of themselves. Man convicted of statutory rape sentenced to celibacy uh, until he gets married. An Idaho judge sentenced a 19-year-old man to a year-long writer program with an unusual condition. He must not have sex with anyone before he gets married. Cody Dwayne Scott Herrera pleaded guilty to the statutory rape of a 14-year-old girl in March and got 5 to 15 years behind bars. But his sentence was suspended in favor of a one-year writer program, during which he will receive intensive counseling and education. Herrera will be released on parole if he successfully completes the year-long program, with one special condition. He may not thereafter have sex with anyone until he gets married. Do you think a judge should be allowed to impose celibacy as a sentence? Tell us what you think. New car gets facial recognition tech. Fiat Chrysler has unveiled their new electric minivan concept. 
The vehicle is able to recognize motorists and passengers for a fully customized system. The Chrysler Portal comes equipped with facial recognition technology. A camera behind the steering wheel initially scans the driver and saves his or her user profile. For subsequent trips, an exterior camera identifies the driver walking toward the vehicle and automatically adjusts car settings according to his preferences. The software is reportedly able to recognize drivers even when they modify their look. There's an option to add voice recognition software for added security, as well as extra cameras around the car to recognize and save passenger profiles. The portal was unveiled at the CES Technology Expo in Las Vegas, but has not yet been put into production. Those interested will have to wait until after 2018. Bungling Burglar A man has been dubbed the Bungling Burglar by police in Radcliffe, England, after he got stuck trying to enter a house through the window. 47-year-old Sean Crawshaw was in the process of breaking and entering when he got his head lodged in a small bathroom window 15 feet above the ground. The home's 60-something-year-old owner returned later to find the unwanted guest and called police. It took firefighters 20 minutes to rescue the would-be burglar who injured his ear when they tried to pull him out of the bathroom window. Crawshaw was sentenced to two and a half years in prison at a court hearing for the December incident.